So for quite a long time, I've been trying to figure out how to um, build bots and things for games that essentially are wrapped around an anonymous function and you can't access the private variables within them. And I found a very simple way of doing that. And I'm going to show you that in this video. So I'm going to use this Pac-Man game as an example. The Pac-Man game is open source. You can find it on GitHub. It's written by a, a software developer in Switzerland called Chris. Um, and I, I like this because the code is very clean. It's very simple. And if I have a quick look at the code here and show you in sources, Pac-Man, Canvas JS, what we've got right at the top, <clears throat> everything is wrapped in this Geronimo function. And if I go all the way down the bottom, we can see that after we've declared this Geronimo function, we call the Geronimo function and then the game works. So there's nothing when it runs, let me just run this, for me to get my hooks into. Click play, let's get the canvas up, the console up. If I say Geronimo, so there's the function, but I can't access anything in it, right? Because I, I don't have access to the, I can't do this. Right, so the way that, what I really want is I want access to things like the Pac-Man so that I can give him infinite lives. So if I find in here um, the Pac-Man, right, let's see, if I, let's figure out. So the game will be running from uh, an interval or a timeout. So let's try interval, nope, timeout, set timeout. So there we go. So there's the main animation loop. So what we've got is a, a simple function that is called um, each time. So we call the function, da, 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 da. then it says set a timeout, then call the function again um, every however many seconds. So if I put a breakpoint there and then play the game now with this breakpoint on, paused and debugger, let's go, we can see that it's cycling through, tick, 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 tick. But now if I go in here to the console, and I do game, I've got access to the game object. So let me take the breakpoint away, unpause the game. Now we're running in the main like uh, memory space. If I do game again, I don't have access to that object. I've only got access to that object when I am in the breakpoint here. And what I really want access to is this Pac-Man object. But Let's have a quick look. If I had access to all the objects, if I had access to the game object, I'd be able to create bots against the game. So now that I'm in breakpoint mode, I can say game dot refresh rate. And the refresh rate is 33. So which means every 33 milliseconds, which means in a second divided by 33. So we've got about 30 frames per second. So I could say equals uh, 15. So that's uh, faster. So that's twice as fast. Let's make it 10. So now if I take away the breakpoint, we should have sped the game up. Yeah, so the game is now a lot faster because you changed the refresh rate. Now I can't do that normally. I need access to the game object. I can only do that when I'm in breakpoint. And I've been trying to figure out how can I use reflection to get in these objects to do this automatically. And the answer was easier than that. Um, I want access to this Pac-Man object. There's the Pac-Man object. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say window dot Pac-Man equals Pac-Man. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a reference to that object, but outside the anonymous function. So now if I run the game, I'm no longer in breakpoint mode. I should still have access to Pac-Man. Yes, I do. So now I can write my bots. So by doing this, all I've done is it's no longer trapped within the anonymous function. And I have a reference to it at the um, DOM level, the window level, the main memory level. So now I can access it. So now I can create little bots. So let's create a little bot for Pac-Man here. So one of the things here with the Pac-Man game is, it's very fast now, when the ghost hits me, I die. 
And if I do that enough times, I will run out of lives and die. So I'm going to create an infinite lives bot. So if I look at Pac-Man, he has a lives um, variable and it's set to one. So I'm going to say function infinite lives. And then that will be if pack man let's put this on a new line so i'm doing shift return again new line there if pacman dot lives is less than three then new line uh, pacman dot lives equals three so i'm going to just set it to three again close the brackets close the brackets and i'm going to call that infinite lives function every I don't know, 100 milliseconds. To do that, I'm going to create what I call an infinite lives bot, which is set interval, call the infinite lives function every 100 milliseconds. Set interval is a, a kind of thread loop. It basically calls whatever function you put in here every however many milliseconds. So every 100 milliseconds, it's going to call the infinite lives function. So that started. So it's called the infinite lives function. So my Pac-Man here should now have more lives. Let's see, Pac-Man dot lives. So he's got three lives, so he's incremented. So now when I do this, I should not die. All right, so my lives went down, but you can see it's jumped back up. I'm not sure why it's only showing two hearts when I've got three lives. It's just the way the game works. Maybe it's not expecting to um, have that many uh, calls on it. Don't know, maybe there's a bug, don't know. But I've now got infinite lives. Now I could play this. Wow, I ran through the ghost there because I was um, going so fast, I think. Finding it hard to play the game at this speed with my keyboard. There we go. So what I really want is not just infinite lives. What I want is invulnerability. So Pac-Man has a method here. And the way that I find all this stuff out is now I read the code, see what methods I want to manipulate. But Pac-Man has a method here called die, a function, which when it calls one of these things, um, puts me into death mode. So I'm just going to say pacman dot die equals, and I'm going to override that function. So anytime we are working, we have access to the objects, we can change the code without actually changing the code, right? We, we can just say that die is a pointer to a function. I'm just going to change the function that it points to and say, now when you call the die method, nothing happens. So if I jump back to the game here, ghost hits me and nothing happens. So now I've got infinite lives if I needed them, but I've also got invulnerability. Now the game's going a little bit too fast for me to play it properly, but that's just a, a quick example. I can't, without bringing these variables into the top level, hack this game very well. I have to do it within breakpoints. But by exposing the object outside at the window level, remember I just did window.pacman equals, and then when it was in breakpoint mode, I have access to the object. The object, bring it out the top level, allows me then to build little bots, um, hack the game, create little infinite lives, that kind of thing. Now, the reason I've chosen this game is because it's open source, it's an, a nice game to read the code, I quite like it, and uh, it's a really good example of the entire game being in this function so you don't have access to it. The only way to get access to it is to pull these objects out. So hopefully that helps. Because people have been asking how do we do these things. This is a quick example of how we get access to it. And since I just figured this out, I thought it might be useful. If you like these kind of videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you get a notification from YouTube when I release a video. And you can contribute to my Patreon where you'll get access to the videos ad-free and more videos and courses that are unique to Patreon that show you how to do stuff like this.